Okay, not technically live. This is the couch. I'm DJ Gonzo hanging out today. He's the undisputed heavy smoker of the world, in my opinion. We have underrated. What's up, bro? How you doing, man? I'm good, bro. I'm glad to have you back on. Oh yeah, I appreciate it. You've been doing, dude, <laughs> these videos. We would talk a little bit about this earlier. <laughs> these videos you've been doing, starting with the stoner guy. I forgot it. I forgot what the name you gave him. Young Coley. Yeah, Young Coley. <laughs> young Coley. Yeah, Young Coley, man. He's crazy, bro. I gotta like hit him off me to like not get in the booth. Right. He keeps wanting to. He he keeps wanting to rap, bro. I'm like, come on, man. I mean, you're tight and everything, but just we got work to do, bro. Come on. <laughs> Your hobby. I'm trying to pay the bills here. Exactly. <laughs> That's great. But I love the use of green screen and everything. Like. It's different from a lot of your other videos. And I, I really I really dig it. Right on. Thank you, man. Your your screen froze. I don't know if it did for you, but what No, I'm I'm going smooth on the side. Okay. Cool, cool. Yeah. I don't need I don't need to see you. I'll just I'll just pretend like I see you. Right. <laughs> Good. I've always wanted to do one of these naked. <laughs> no but Damn, bro. <laughs> that's that's why I was saying earlier, I was like, you're not from it. California or Arizona. That's more like a Midwest thing to say. Is it? <laughs> not really. Not really. I don't even not know what really. I'm talking about. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a is, punk rock. It's it's a punk rock thing to say, kind of, I guess. Which, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just always talk a whole <laughs> lot of crap. Tends to get me in trouble. Make some people laugh. It works out. <laughs> yeah. As long as you're not, I guess, hurting too many people. Oh, no, no, no. We we try no hurting. That's that's the young me, the old me now. And we we're all we're both growing we're both growing older unfortunately. Here here's a question though. Yeah. What what do you think the differences are between young underrated and you now? And I have heard this question. This is a good one, bro. <clears throat> um I think now I'm just uh trying all different stuff and having fun but i'll say i'll say young underrated was just getting into understanding how music worked and i was just learning so much every day that i was just into it so hard like 10 hour 12 hours a day every day of my life was basically right making music and then underrated of years before I switched and went solo you could say I was kind of just going through the motions and not really in the vibe of loving it and following everything that felt fun whereas now I kind of just do whatever I want to do that's fun like like how I when I started so that's that's the best part that's why now um it's fucking fun and so when it's fun that's always when i feel like i've done my best work and that's why that video was so different because it was fun and i never really liked making videos until pretty much this last one yeah i because the reason i asked that is is and this is from an outside uh view yeah seem more comfortable more relaxed now. Yeah. Like, that, like that. Me, it's like you came to accept and understand and then be comfortable with you, where you're at right now, what you're doing, and got to finally enjoy it and stuff after, like, all the hard work and everything you put in it, you know? Yeah. I think it's, it's yeah, it's cool that you saw that because that's how it feels. And so that's that's the best part is – you know, there's this dude that has been around <clears throat> with me making music. His name's Al Rock, and he was basically part of Potluck in the very beginning. And uh, he's been around me the whole time. So he, when he sees me that same way, he feels it too, like how you're saying it. And it's cool when people, like, it's cool when people catch that because 
that's what I want them to catch. Like, I'm, I'm glad that you think I feel more comfortable and it feels that way. Cause that, cause that's how it feels. And that's, that's super dope that I can, there's something about that that's refreshing and like, just feels good. And it's kind of like you said, you know, put in all the hard work, but it's still hard work, but the work's fun. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's the difference when you want to do what the hell you want to do. Like when you, when you get to do what you feel like doing the second you want to do it, that's how I work the best. So when I don't have to plan shit as much, or if I can like, you know, just wake up and be like, all right, what do I, what, what zone am I going to go in and do the best thing that's going to be fun? Then that's just how I try to live. You know, obviously you got to have responsibilities of shit in your life, but my main goal (laughs) is to not have any. (laughs) <laughs> if that makes sense so that I can focus on just going in the place that feels good every day. Right. You know? So do you think you finally got that chance to, cause for a while you, you hadn't done like a lot of music after um, being, being in Potluck and after uh sub noise and everything, everything kind of went like slowed down. Right. And then like over the last year, year and a half. So, of being out there on your own, it seems like you finally became underrated is what I'm trying to say. Like yeah. you found your way with your time away from everything. Uh, I don't know. I, I hope, I mean, I don't know, bro. I don't, I think that, uh, honestly it sounds might, might sound weird, but maybe, maybe we we're getting too deep, but oh. <laughs> maybe, maybe you never find yourself and you just kind of like go through the motions and then, you know, you hit your spot where it feels good and you just kind of hang out there for a while until you need to find the next spot that feels good. But who knows when the one is that's right. You know what I mean? Maybe this right. is just the, 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 the <laughs> maybe this is just the bridge to get to where it's really going to be. I don't know, but I, I'm happy that you say that. It makes me feel good that you feel that way. Cause yeah, man, I feel good. I feel, I do. I feel good. I feel good being able to express myself honestly and how I, how I am as a person and other people listen to it. And I don't got to like be anything than, than what I really feel. And I can just communicate with people and it feels good to be able to do that. Like, that's like the fucking, that's, that's what I think you're talking about. Like, and I was, and I was telling, telling my friends that and different people, you know, maybe my mom or just maybe my dad, everybody that is close to me. I was just like, man, this this idea of being able to have a thought and then being able to turn that into a song but as you're making it like you know you've made decisions and making songs for so long that when you make a thousand decisions by the time you get to the end of the song you don't really know how it's going to turn out unless you've done it a million times now i feel like i've done it a million times so i'm like at each decision, I go, okay, if I go this way, um, the song's going to be over here. But if I go this way, the song's going to be over here. And when you stack those decisions up, by the time you get to the end, that's what your song's going to be. So I feel like I've so much experience doing different songs, different verses. How's that going to sound when I'm done? I already know in my head, kind of. I can almost write the whole song in my head. At least if it, if it works out, that's, what, that's the goal. And like I've been able to do that lately. That's fucking awesome. To me, that's like, that feels good. I'm proud that I can go, all right, man, I want to make a song about your, your, um, whatever, anything I can think of. I want to make a song about this green bong right here. I can sit there and write a verse about that green bong and make it still interesting and communicate with you. And so now I can communicate real thoughts that I really sit and think about when I smoke weed and just sit here and stare at the ceiling. Hmm. There's something fun about, there's just something about that. That's crazy. That makes me feel good, man. Like I can tell you how I feel in a song and if the song's good enough and makes people feel enough, that's how good the song kind of feels. Like at first it's, it's, it's okay. It's your diary or it's your, you're letting your emotions out, right? You're like, oh man, I feel it's my therapy because I'm writing down this and I got it out of me. There's that part. And then there's the part when other people feel you and you're like, wow, I just had a thought that hit hella other people, whether it helped them or it made them feel good or whatever. My thing now is like, 
that's my that's that's like the icing on top of it because it's like i'm already gonna do this if you listen to it or not <laughs> you know what i mean it's like so man how could i not feel good you know okay well here's another one for you so in uh, the process of making music what do you enjoy more the creative aspect or the performing aspect of it you mean performing like actually rapping at a show type performing yeah. or the video performing? That's or? the payoff or, or do you enjoy the creative, the building, it, everything you were just saying right now? Uh, you're, you're, so you, you are saying compare it to like doing a show? Yeah, like which one, which, what's the bigger payoff for you? What do you enjoy more, the creative aspect, putting it together, the song, and telling the story? Or is it performing it? Is that the big payoff? I think it's got to be... Performing, it's cool, but like the way I started was I wasn't trying to perform. I was just trying to make music for people to listen to. Like when I started, there wasn't making videos unless you were like making a million dollar video. You know what I mean? Like people didn't just make videos. When I started making music, technology wasn't like that, right? <laughs> it was like, you know, you're you're the shit if you even have like a four track to record on like you're the shit if you can even record somebody like now it's like everyone can record a song so what i'm trying to say is like the fact that you can make a song so easily and you can do all that that's how i started and that's what i've always done the performing part was just kind of like okay you're supposed to go show the people what the song sounds like like i didn't really ever like want to do that the only thing that was fun was that when you'd go do shows people would like what you did and then that was fun like i yeah. like being able to do it and people cheer and they'd be like that's tight and you did good and they know your songs and they don't even live near you that part of it's cool that part of it's fucking awesome right but it's not the same it's not the same it's just it's it's almost like an ego thing at that point it's like okay that part's tight yeah but in the end, I mean, that didn't really, that wasn't really my thought when I was writing the song. That wasn't really the beat that, that, that didn't really have anything to do with the song. It might create like the next song because the feeling I had with fans and I'd put that in the next song or whatever, but it's just not the same thing. Like I could live not doing a show again. So that's how you would kind of, that's how I kind of look at it. If I can live never doing a show again, but I will never live not making a song or writing a rap again, then that kind of tells you the answer, I guess. You know, it, it definitely does. You enjoy the <laughs> but, I, but it doesn't mean I don't ever want to do shows because there's something about shows that's awesome too. But it's just that if I had to pick one, I would pick definitely pick chilling in the studio and being able to touch people on a on a more of a level of their minds hearing a song, not them than seeing me actually rap in front of their face. Whatever. Right. <laughs> so, so I, I mean, yeah. Your your, your, uh, your, questions, your questions are fun, are fun to think about. about so hopefully, I'm not, I'm not going too far. far. Right, guys, you're doing great. <laughs> Me, because okay. right. like sometimes my shows end up being a whole bunch of pretty much dick jokes. <laughs> just, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah that's I mean, I'm not saying so. So I like, I like, I'd rather just. I mean, well, I think it's, it's fun to be funny and act stupid. That's the best, man. I'm not hating on him. I love it, too. But when, but when I get on here, I'm talking to you, and I've been sitting here, here, here killing myself to the point where, like, like just every ounce of thought process put into doing music or promoting music or trying to think about a video or live streaming or whatever it might be. It's like, man, when I get on here to talk to you and you're asking me about shit, I'm like, bro, I've been going in, bro. <laughs> this shit is fun as hell. So <laughs> that's good. I mean, I mean, for how many how many years have you been doing this? Too long, bro. No, not too long. Fuck, twenty years probably. A little bit more, actually. I mean, but the thing is, I didn't start doing it like this. I started doing it like I try. I, I feel like I almost I almost do a lot of different things when it comes to it because. um it's all fun to me. Like DJing was fun to me when I first DJed. I didn't think I was ever going to do anything else but DJ. Then, then making beats. I would never want to rap in front of people and talk in front of people. And like that was fuck that. Then it just kept going. Now, so now I'm like, man, there's so there's just there's too many things to do. Right. There's too many. Like, 
I don't even know what your question was, bro. I'm sorry. Well, what yeah, are we you? drift. That's what we do. We we drift with this. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm drifting. I was just wondering where did I go with that? Like, where did where did that even come from? <laughs> Damn, they're gonna ask me this too. <laughs> you don't remember either? Okay, good. So it's not just me. It's good. Hey, we take people on rides. You know, okay. like I, I like the interviews because it's hard to get people to watch. Why well, don't like calling them interviews anymore? The show. Yeah. It's hard to get people to spend time to sit and actually, you know, check something out. So yeah. I like things being different. We never know what tangents and stuff we're going to go on. Yeah, I like that too. And I and I like I kind of like just in, in just podcasts or interviews or whatever where you're just you're just you're chilling, bro. You're just hanging out, you know. And if there's something interesting, obviously you could talk about it. But whatever, man. Like people are interesting in general. You could talk about fucking whatever, and I'll be like, huh, what? What? <laughs> That's interesting about that dude. What What is he talking about? Like, I don't know, man. We could talk about anything. I don't give a fuck. Right? And we, yeah. we you know, I, I feel lucky to get to do this because I'm not talented musically or anything else. I have an unfortunate um, alter ego um, <laughs> that gets turned loose sometimes and stuff, you know? Kind of like my young Kali. Yeah. Except he's a juggle of mumble rapper that okay. ain't ever done a song ever in his life. Huh. Okay. He likes to but he likes to start beefs since people are doing all those fake beefs back and forth. Like they're really homies, but they're doing fake beefs and stuff. Uh -huh. friend I noticed. So we created a fake rapper to have fake beefs with people. Oh, damn. Right. <laughs> and That's it's, crazy. You're like a, you're like a, um, you're like a dude who, um, what's that show called? The catfish. You're like, you're like the catfish, like the rapper version of catfish. <laughs> that's so tight like i you should do you should call neve and whatever the max and i don't think he's there anymore i've been watching that show that shit's funny yeah uh, man i'll be catching some of the characters to try to we catch you be like oh man he was t he was beefing over here on his facebook page i don't even think it's real look up that phone number let's find who this is right i mean he all started i give him a good backstory off of a an icp song uh the cat pillar guy whatever and uh, the same kind of voice and stuff went with it. Gave him a spot out in uh, Sterling Heights, Michigan, where he came from, and a beef with Violent J to start with. Oh, wow. Because, okay. Do you want to see this guy? I mean, I, I do, but your screen it hasn't even moved, bro, the whole time. Oh, like, my screen hasn't even moved? Yeah, I can't even see you. You wouldn't even see you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, so, yeah, I forgot all about that. Yeah, I'm just looking at a still picture. Yeah. God, that's scary. I'm sorry. I got to look at him in real life, bro. <laughs> hey, live on camera. She said it. Uh. Oh, she's great off camera. That's <laughs> awesome. The things I say on camera, you should hear the things I say off. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> Edit this out. Well, I'll do the voice for you then. Then I'll take a picture of this guy. He, he wears a Jason mask. He's got a, a steampunk hat from Halloween on and a Christmas jacket, dinner jacket with cats all over it that's bright red. His name is Mr. Kitty Lovems. He loves cats. Damn, bro. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> and, and dude, this is how he talks. This is how he talks. Yo, what's up, Mr. Underrated and stuff? You know what I'm saying, Skyster? How you doing, everybody? You know? Does he have a. So. So when you make the video of him, oh, he doesn't ever rap, huh? He just wants to rap? Yeah, pretty, pretty much he's supposed to be on this song, but it just hasn't happened yet. You should let him at least do, like, little parts, little intros or something. Right. I'm supposed something. to get on stage with uh, some punk rock dudes, um, HMD, and run around with them on shit, so it should be funny. We talk some stuff, but like I just like I can't get that out of my comfortability. She yeah. says I need mental health. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. So I mean, I don't know. I don't know, bro. Everyone's different, bro. And who fucking knows, right? Who fucking knows? Everyone's different, and and shit, whatever. What the fuck. Right. <laughs> There's so many people, bro. What the fuck? We're going through the shit we're going through now, too. And then you know what's crazy is it's kind of like it's, it's kind of weird. Everyone has their different ways of thinking about it. But it's like this 
this whole thing going on where everyone has to stay home for a long time. And it's like, people got to like, at first you hate it because you're, you're, you're saying like, damn, man, I can't do what I usually do, but there's something about it that is kind of, it's kind of good in a way of it's different. Like it's a change from our normal life to where we sit back and look at life and be like, damn, what have I been doing? Where am I at? I have this time to sit and think and figure out what I'm doing with my life almost, you know, it's kind of, it's interesting. And I, and I didn't think about this until like a week ago, you know, it's been what a couple, like a couple months we've been worried about this or some people have, most people have or whatever, however you think about what's going on, but it's a crazy time. And it's like, it's a kind of a good time in a way, like there's good parts about it. I'll say, obviously it's not good. When when people when when people are are dying and people are sad, it's never good. But I'm saying that there's something about it you can take away from it that's I didn't realize that's happening. Also, it's pretty yeah, interesting, right. man. Like everyone seems to be learning about themselves. <laughs> you feel me? Like yeah. it's like yo, I gotta I gotta go through something, and some people don't do it good, and some people are sad and don't like it. Some people go get super stir crazy and can't handle it, or whatever it might be, but. You're definitely in a different place, and sometimes being different and and having a change is a good thing. Right. So it's a, I don't know. That's just how I look at it. It's just weird, bro. And so, like I said, it just brings back to everyone's different because everyone is fucking different. What right. the fuck? You should be able to think how you think, as long as you're not hurting anybody else. Fuck, man. Come on, man. And people who are against certain people because they 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 think differently is crazy to me still. Like, it's like, bro, it's 2020 now. So I don't know. I mean, maybe. I just think that shit like this, if you if it makes anybody start thinking differently, it's positive because we all get stuck in life and, and kind of go one direction. But when we have to stop and do it a different way, it's good. You know what I mean? I don't know. How do you feel about it? Like, how do you how you been the last couple months uh, dealing me, with this? For me, I um I lost hours. But mm -hmm. I'm still working because I work at a truck stop. Okay. And they got a subway in there, and I do both positions. So, um, so I've been working, but it's 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 one of those hard ones to call because like where we where I live in Kingman, Arizona, we get travelers that come in to go see the Grand Canyon. What's not from Las Vegas, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of Chinese, Korean, and a lot of European tourists. Like we all got sick, horribly sick, in November and December. Well, mm. everybody around me but me, but I don't get sick like that. I got really, really, really sick. My baby, my, my, the living dead girl here, like, it was bad. So I think it came and happened sooner than what they're saying. Because we were sick for two to three weeks. Yeah, for about two or three weeks. But as for right now, I, I get why people want to get back to work. You know, I, and I'm kind of stuck on it where it's like, you have the right to stay home, but you should also have the right to go to work too, I guess. Yeah, it's it's you know I've been talking about it with different people over the last month, and it's like it's really hard for anybody to make. There's, it's so you can you can almost see both sides, you know, like to be so one way is is hard to be on this type of thing because either way it's either way it's not good. <laughs> you feel me? Either way, I'll say this. Either way, it's not. There's something not good about the entire thing, no matter which way you go. So it's like, which one's, which one's not as bad? And it seems like they're both the same and it's hard to make a decision. Like I can see, I can see people wanting to get back to work, you know, then I can yeah. see people being like, yo, you go back to work and this whole shit could happen again. We could be out of work even longer. So it's just, and then everyone got to agree, bro. Are you kidding me? It's, it feels like, it feels like when you, uh, put it in a perspective of trying to do a show and there's, you know, 20 people involved, say the promoter, the, the, the manager of the place, the bands, the sound men, the security, they all got to come together and work together. And they all got to decide that the right idea of doing something, if something goes down. So they have to have rank and listen to people. But then on these type of decisions in this world, bro, this shit is, Imagine how big that decision is, man. That's crazy. Like it's not one size fits all. It is. It, yeah. It's just, I do not envy people with in those positions. So all I can really do 
is watch and be like, I'm in Humboldt where it's like the middle of nowhere. So I'm kind of not involved. I mean, we wear masks when we go to the store, but it, we don't have that many people with it. And it's not, you know, it's not as horrific as it sounds on TV. Right. So uh, that's just the experience here. So my perspective is just, you know, there's 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 a good in people being able to have to stay home and, and learn about themselves. Now, there's also a good in people not being – there's a good in people having money to survive. And if you can't go to work and you're losing money, depending on who you are, that's not cool. So that can change everything. So it's all – it's all there's so many different people – going through so many different situations. So it's just, it's just a fucking crazy time. It's so hard to even pinpoint something and make it make sense. There's so many angles. This shit's crazy because yeah, and we never know what we're being told. If it's, if it's true, what's the, what's behind the thoughts on stuff? Because I mean, seriously, if we look at suicides, overdoses, the regular flu and all its variations, where we see this happening, this death happen a lot. It's just being told to us more now. That right. just makes me nervous because I, I, I like to think about stuff. So it makes me a little nervous on what's really going on, you know, without Definitely. losing my humanity side, you know. Yeah, it's 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 hard, man. It's, it's, it goes back to kind of just the whole vibe of the thing. It's like I always believe in, you know, people with power are going to use their power not in the best way because that's how humans are yeah. and it's it sucks that that's the case but like once i kind of realized that was the case in the long run it's it's kind of like i kind of have an eye out and looking around like is this shit real you know that's my first way of thinking of shit so when i look at this i'm like it's possible that it's all a fucking sham and there's some reason why they want us to sit in the house. I mean, I've heard different people say they're different ideas and stuff, you know, but no one really fucking knows because a lot of the conspiracy theory kind of ideas are, you know, could be fucking true. But then when you kind of look at their proof, their proof isn't that good either. No. You feel me? It's not like it's not like when you looked at the nine one one thing and you were like, "Well, hold on, that YouTube video is really looking good." Right. Yeah. Right. This one isn't. This one isn't like that. Even the people that don't think it's true and 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 say there's some other reason, their theory is kind of like, "Ah, bro, I don't know, man. I don't know about your thoughts either." <laughs> so I'm kind of caught in the middle of all of it, and it's it's crazy that I've never gone. I can't say I I've never, but I could say that. This is just a thing that we've never gone through. And as people in general, we all have to go through it. No matter if you're going through it, like, um, you know, everyone's going through it in their own way for wherever they are in their life. But everyone's going through something right now. Every single person, you know, no matter how much it affects them, it's either affecting them to their last breath, which is fucking terrible to think about, or it's, or it's to the person who doesn't really <clears throat> isn't really that affected because there's somebody out of it or there's somebody you know rich or that doesn't have to do things or whatever it might be but everyone's affected to a point where we all are affected at the same time that's crazy that's never happened right. that i've ever seen i mean in the yeah. world too it's not just like it's not just like one country mm. <laughs> it's like the whole world's feeling it. it's fucking weird Right, which is even uh, on a larger scale than the plague. Sure, yeah. And, and and it's like, it seems like it's not that serious to the point where when everyone says, oh, it's as bad as the normal flu, you know, but um, it's a little worse. It is. <laughs> and it's, and it's, no, I'm just saying that's that's the idea. They're saying it's worse than the flu. It's super contagious, you know. You can hurt people that are older more, but you can still hurt yourself. You know, there's things and you don't want to, obviously you don't want to, and you don't want to hurt people. I mean, right. so it's hard. It's just hard to, to see what's right. And so it's just, a, it's just a spot where it's like, you're so, you could be so one-sided about it, but in the end, everyone's kind of like, I don't fucking know. 
<laughs> like right. whoever whoever really knows what's going on, if there is someone that really knows what's going on, there's not very many of those people. No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> but on the lighter side of everything, yeah. Good thing that we already wear a mask on our rear ends because you technically they say can pass coronavirus with a fart. Do they really? Yeah, but you have to be bare ass though. So. So if you got pants or everything else on, you're covered just like a mask. Oh, man. I read that, and it wasn't, and Facebook fact checkers didn't flag it yet, so I'm like, okay, it might be true. <laughs> Facebook flag checkers, man. What about your YouTube flag checkers? They're going to be like, did he say the word? Did he say it? They're not. I don't think they care about me and my 116 subscribers. Yeah, they might still. They don't give a fuck. They want it all, bro. They don't care. They want it all. They're coming for it. Any word, any word that triggers, like around 9-11, if you oh. said, like, you said no, Muhammad, it's, bomb. It's, no. Well, that kind of, but yeah, that, but you know, the new one now is what we were talking about. That's why I didn't even say the word. I didn't want to mess you up, bro. I just but, said we're staying at home. That's right. I got copies. They need to get on my laptop to get the copies. <laughs> I'll be back up. I'm just saying, man, I've been seeing so many different podcasts and different things on YouTube where, or I don't know, maybe Facebook too. I haven't paid attention to Facebook lately, but YouTube is serious about it. Like, they're like, nah, bro. You can't say it, bro. Nah. <laughs> nope. I don't know if you under, if you knew that, man. That's it's on another level. Like, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do um, advertisements right now for my videos that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. You remember the the Stay Strong video? Is it has to do with the whole situation? Yeah. And yeah, so, I, I made the song. I'll just tell you, I haven't really told anybody except for like my people, just a couple of friends. I made the song thinking that actually, let me let, I'll let you in on this. This is crazy. So it'll be better tomorrow is the most nicest song ever. Right. You've heard it. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. That song got flagged, bro, for not being suitable to advertise. And it's not even me trying to advertise it. It's, it's, you understand YouTube to the point where when you get monetized, you have commercials play before your video, right? That's how you get yeah. paid, right? So then, so they told me that that video was too much because I was smoking a joint in it. Basically, that's what they said. So then yeah. a video, yeah, so then a video that t to me, that video put me on with a lot of people because they organically took that video with the algorithm I've been learning this stuff and they took it and they put it in spots where people would see it that they thought was similar to my music all on their own. Like YouTube's algorithm did that on its own and took that video and made that video made me a good amount of money and a good amount of fans. And then decided one day that it was too much because there was smoking in it. So to me, it's so weird how it works. It doesn't even make sense. And I also paid a little bit of money when I first put it out to um, to just advertise it and, it, and it got passed for that. So why one day, all of a sudden, it's not worthy of people unless they're over 18? Right. So YouTube is going crazy with different things. And, and the whole thing about this thing we're going through, if you say that word, when I did the Stay Strong video, I made the video on purpose so I could advertise for it. I didn't cuss. I cuss in every song probably ever in my life almost. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't cuss and I didn't smoke weed in the video. I probably don't even have a video like that. I did that video just so I could try to push it through advertising. And I sat down and said, how do I feel about the situation? I made that song. And then they still didn't let me advertise it, bro, because I, because it's about what we're going through. That's how crazy okay. it is. Yeah. So I was saying, bro, we can't even sit on here and say that word or they're going to take your shit off. They won't take it off, but they're not going to, they won't let you monetize it. It's crazy. Right. right. And I haven't got there yet. Hopefully. Well, it's, dude, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. But you know why they do it? Do you want to know why I think they do it at least? I think they do uh, it because there's so many conspiracy things going on around YouTube. They don't want that to be – they don't want that to get everywhere. Right. And they probably don't have full time to fully check stuff, so they're just like keen on certain things. Yeah. They're doing automated um, reviews as well. Yes. And so that's why I've been trying to trick them. See? 
I'm telling I'm telling my secrets on their own system. They're probably going to see this and cut me off. But, <laughs> no, but it's it's just fun trying to figure out how the computers work and how the algorithms work. When we were saying trying to figure out my camera earlier today, I was like, no, nah, I'm going to get it. <laughs> You're like, no, nah, just... <laughs> I don't want you to get mad about trying to figure out. I'm like, nah, bro, I love this shit. This is what I do. I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> so, right. yeah, so I just, man, I've just been nerding out, man, because we're not supposed to do anything else anyways. I'm like, this is this is funny, bro. I'm, I'm good. I'm trying to learn, but I'm just all over the place, bro. So. Yeah, my, my lady didn't know that this was called quarantine because she does this all the time anyways. <sighs> uh-huh. There it is. That's what I'm saying. I do this all the time, like. This is, I mean, I'm doing it more, but it's not that much more for me. Like, I like the shit. As I got older, I realized so people... Different for me. Like, this has not really changed my life in any way, honestly, except... Oh, wait, 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 I take that back. Now the doctors call me and tell me I don't have to come in. I can do it over video. It's a dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing. It's like, that's what I was saying. Like, everyone's going through different... in in, in a different way. Like, I see so many people going through things that it makes it harder for them. And I don't like that. Cause I want, you know, I want whoever I care about to be in a good place. So that part sucks, but in me, just me being selfish, if it was just me and it didn't have anything to do with anybody, I'm, tr I'm not tripping on it either. Like I really, I'm cool being away from people. People suck, bro. People are cool. <laughs> people are cool, but the older you get, you realize, you know what, man? Like, I mean, I love people, but like, I'm I'm cool right now off some people because I like figuring out myself right now. It's it's kind of fun, and this is a good excuse. And I feel like a lot of people are doing it. You know, who who can be in a situation that, like I said before, when I when I was like, I've lived my whole life trying to not have responsibility so I could just make music and learn how that part works because that's what I love doing. So I was like, that's how I do my whole life. So when this kind of thing happens, I'm like, what what's different for me? What the fuck's different? <laughs> you right. know? So I don't know. It's just everyone's going through it in a different way. And it's, it's just a crazy time, bro. And I don't know. So you're saying you've been working, but not working all the way as much as you were, or you're, or you're fine with your job. I'm just not working as much. Not as much. So I, you're kind of like, man, I want to get back to work, right? Yeah. I'd like to get more stuff going on. Totally. No, I get you. I get you. And a lot of people are like that. That's why this is, this is a hard thing to do. Cause then they're like, all right, well, if you go, it might get worse again. And people right. don't like, but, anyways, but man, if, when you get a bunch of, whatever politicians and whoever trying to work together and make decisions that's rough <laughs> <laughs> right like god that's rough anyways man i'm sorry for tangent and off like that i'm no, just in deep this thought is what we do. You're good? This, okay this is what we do on this show i love it i <laughs> love right. it i just want to make so much, we only got so much longer because i got to do the other one after this sure um, but i did want to shout out dude you got one of the best fan groups ever. Oh, yeah? You're up in the fan group? Yeah. yeah nice. I accidentally called you Lamo one time. Lamo? Yeah. We what were saying mean? something, and then you said something. I said laughing my ass off. And oh. <laughs> I wrote Lamo. Oh. I me Lamo. Okay. I, I kind of do remember that. Okay, my bad. I didn't know it was you. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, that group. I, I posted so, there. Do you think that group, do you think that group, like you say, it's the best. Why do you say that? Like, is it the vibe of it? Like, what's, the what's the vibe? The, the vibe is? is great. Your, your admin, the admin for it, they, they keep things running smooth. Like, I just go through and laugh at stuff. I, I, there's no drama in the comment threads or nothing. Like, and I don't no. talk to nobody. I just, I enjoy it. And I see how much they, they love you and what you do. Like, That's they're nice. a good, strong fan base. Nice. Cool. I'm glad you look at it like that. I, I look at it like that too, but when you're actually in it, you don't you don't know if you're thinking right. So that's cool. I'm glad you think that, man. You know, you know, you know what I've been um which is super interesting, I think, to me and my nerdy way of thinking, but like this whole YouTube thing has been kind of rough. And it's like it, and and Instagram has been rough too. Like they I don't know what happened, but my, my account just doesn't really work like it used to. Like no one can repost from my stuff. Um, it doesn't really, I don't know if it doesn't go out as much. 
I know it. I know I just don't get the love that I used to get on my Instagram as far as reach and stuff. So I know that affects everybody also, but mine's like super bad. So I'm like, skip Instagram. I barely even want to post on it and play with Instagram now. And um, Facebook doesn't even let me advertise because I think I had weed stuff on there before. So they're like, nah, dude, you can't even advertise. So my thing was, and YouTube shuts down my number one video. So my thing is like, I want to do uh, my own like social network, but I don't want it to be all crazy and like, you know, Facebook ish as far as being big and crazy, but I do want it to have things similar that you're used to that when you go on your Facebook, it has things like that, you know, or not Instagram, but more like Facebook and <clears throat> If we could incorporate videos somehow, it'd be tight, but I'm not sure how that gets when you start dealing with videos. Probably makes your site crazy. But in the end, I want to have my own social media network where it can be, and I wanted to do exactly like the group. So the fact that you said the group is tight, that's my idea for like a website where <clears throat> more people can come, you know, and they just have that same vibe that you're talking about. So I'm glad you think that it does have that. That's cool. Absolutely. And I don't get Instagram. Like, I don't enjoy it. Uh, yeah. That's the only way to get a hold of some artists. So uh, I'm on there. But right. the only thing useful for me is I can post on it and it posts on Facebook. But then I still got to go back and change damn settings on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. Social media has got to be the point now where it's like it was tied up first because they, they treat you like, they treat you like, um, like a drug dealer, basically. They're like, I mean, for, for being someone coming at it from the music standpoint and trying to make your living through it, it's like when Facebook and Instagram, basically MySpace at the beginning, MySpace was cool because they never got to the point where they started jacking you. They just were done. But Facebook was so big and blew music people up. Like a lot of music people when I was, you know, coming up doing shows a lot and doing stuff back in the day with more people it was like you were looking at facebook like that was your thing like oh man i got this many likes on my facebook oh 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 i got this many people that care about me on my facebook oh oh i did my whole you know album release through facebook oh i booked my whole tour through facebook like it, when it gets to that point facebook realizes okay we've given you all this stuff for like 10 years now we're gonna now we know you need it you feel me all right so now we're going to start this advertising thing. And guess what? You can only advertise the stuff we want you to advertise. And guess what else? It's going to cost hella money to even make a dent. And guess what else? The people that used to make posts and, and actually be able to reach their fans music-wise, so I'm sure it works for all businesses, you can't even reach your fans anymore unless you pay money to reach them. That's where it starts to become like not fun. And so... Instagram was the same way. It started out, yo, boom, boom, we're cool. I have 20,000 followers say, when I send my picture out, I know my people are going to see it. This is tight. That's that's how Instagram was. Then Facebook bought them and then did the same exact thing. So now we're sitting here going, all right, Instagram and Facebook's just a business to make money off people. That's why you're getting advertisements. That's why they know what you already like. That's why it's just not even fun. It's just, it's turning into bullshit. So YouTube's turning into bullshit too because they're just a corporation that has to tell you what's right and wrong because they're going to make the least amount of money on that decision. So it makes sense. It all makes sense. But what I'm saying is that shit sucks and that's not fun. <laughs> and <laughs> it's not fun. It's not, we can't be who we want to be. And so I think that it's tight that if I could start something where people can just be who they want to be and, and basically in the, in the rules on my social network, it says, don't be a fucking dickhead. And don't do shit you know is wrong. And we're going to check you if you are, you know, and that's all we got to do. We don't got to censor it to the point where it's crazy. At the same time, when you're that big of a thing, you have to do bullshit like that. So we don't have, we wouldn't have to do bullshit like that because we're just going to be a little community that talks shit about what we want to talk shit about. Right. <laughs> I, I think it's it. fun. <laughs> I love so it. So that's my plan, man. No, right. Well, you know, I'm glad you uh, came on. You're always welcome to come on anytime, any show I got, man. It's always cool to kick it with you. Appreciate it, man. Thank uh, you. Anytime. anytime. Uh, any last things you want to go through or anything? 
No, nah, I just basically, if anyone's interested in, in music or videos, really videos is probably the thing these days is my YouTube channel got, I got some new videos on there that I like a lot and I'm, I'm proud of. Uh, Underrated World is my, is my YouTube channel. And you could pretty much after that, you know how it's all, all the social media stuck together, like the big, terrible black monster they are. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it's all good. Underrated World on YouTube. I appreciate you, bro. I got high and I just started chilling and going off. I hope it's okay. And oh, thank dude. you. Man. Epic. I love it. This is the way the couch should be. Okay. I appreciate you, brother. You have a good one. Speaker, don't go way too far. We got King Relic Force 5 Records coming up. Um...